The intention of this course and seminar is to give everyone an understanding of what do we mean by forensic document examination. The objectives of the presentation are to give you an understanding of what does a forensic document examiner do, what are some of the techniques and tools that we use in forensic document examination, how do we use those tools, and, what is, and we'll talk a little bit about where is the future of document examination going. One of the reasons we want to talk about that is handwriting is being used a whole lot less, yet document examination is about documents. It's not just about handwriting. Handwriting is one part of it, as we'll see. My latest educational aspect is a graduate level certificate from East Tennessee State University. They're the only school in the country that offers graduate program in forensic document examination to private examiners. So what do uh, forensic, doc forensic document examiners do? We authenticate documents. So what that means is we look at documents to determine was this document created by the same person, written by the same person, so we, so we need more than one sample. That's different from the study of graphology or graphoanalysis where you're looking at a, at a document and trying to come up with a, de a description of the person who wrote it. In forensic, doc forensic document examination, we're looking at documents, and the document can be handwritten, it can be printed on a computer, it can be uh, scribbles on the sidewalk and graffiti, it can be lots of stuff. But we'll talk more about that. One of the things that we'll, we look at here is all these different types of documents, and we also look that it ha we have to use a scientific approach, a scientifically based approach. If we don't use a scientifically based approach, we will not be admitted into a courtroom which, because what document examiners do oftentimes is testify in court cases or at depositions. We have to give something that, val that valid substantially substantiates what we're saying. So what, we, what the whole scientific method says, and we have to use a scientific method, is we, we start out with a hypothesis and we try to disprove that hypothesis. You, never, you can never prove a hypothesis. You can only say, I accept it as true. And leave the door open that maybe there's, oh, that it's not true. And that's the whole basis of the scientific method. We also have to understand the law. There's a lot of law that goes into understanding expert testimony. There's a lot of law that goes into, into this whole field. In 1923, there was a court case, and it's, no, it's called Fry. Here in California, we apply something called Kelly Fry. And what that says is that the, the methodology that we use is generally accepted by the industry. There was another case which came from here in California called Daubert. It's Dau Daubert versus Merrill Dow, which ended up going up to the Supreme Court, got kicked back to the Ninth, ninth District, and it, the ultimate decision was that there were some rulings in terms of what needs to be done in order to justify a, an expert being able to testify. Now, one of the things in Daubert is the, the judge becomes what's called the gatekeeper. The judge gets to decide whether the expert can testify or not. The California Supreme Court has ruled on that saying we accept the Kelly Fry generally accepted practices, we don't accept Daubert for the reason that no judge is skilled enough in all subject matters to say I am the gatekeeper to keep in or, or ex to exclude or include a witness. In California, I think the California Supreme Court has been very forward thinking in that because no one person has that all the all the knowledge to make that decision. That's one area where I bring to the table some some expertise in order to do the document examination is understanding this idea of variability and error rate and so on. And then general acceptance of the method used. That's going back to from the Kelly Fry. Is it generally accepted within the community? Rule, I had up there rule 702. Rule 702 is from federal rules of evidence. That's federal court 
And we're not going to go into that in depth here. But when, if, test, if an expert's testifying in federal court, we're subject to what's called Rule 702 of the Federal Rules of Evidence, which talks about expert testimony. We, we have standards that we use. There's an organization called ASTM International. You can look for it online as ASTM.org. If you can hold up the ASTM standards, and say, I follow the ASTM standard. Well, well you're following generally accepted practice. There, there's no question. So long as you can show that you followed it and there aren't any holes in your, in your methodology. The one thing that we can do as document examiners is define what is our standard operating procedure for doing document examination. What do we do when someone calls us with a case, potential, when they give us the documents, how do we handle those documents? What do we do with them? How do we start the examination? What do we look for? And, and so on. Now, in document examination, we have what are called known sets and question sets. The questioned are the ones that where we don't, we're not sure who wrote this, or we're not sure this is the origin of the, of the, the document. The known are the ones that are come from the person who we want to check, we want to compare. The more known documents that we have, the better our opinion. And we'll talk more to that as we go forward when we start talking about variability. Because one of the things as document examiners we have to look at is how does a person write? There's a, there's a theory out there that no two people write exactly the same. I don't buy that theory. Let's look at the United States. We have 300 million people in the country. How do we know for sure that no two of those 300 million people write the same? It's an open question. Does anyone have any idea how you could substantiate that claim? Because there's a lot, there's a, a lot of re literature that says one of, the, one of the theories is no two people write, write exactly the same. But think of what you'd have to do to find two people that write the same. <laughs> it, it would be an incredible job, possibly an impossible job. It's possibly impossible if you go searching for it. But how do you know that you and Lydia don't write the same way? Well, it's not mathematically verifiable. That's, that's just that. It's, it's not verifiable mathematically, right. I'll answer that. A hypothesis is basically a theory. To put it in simple terms, a hypothesis is a theory, something that you believe to be true. Think of it as an assumption that you're making. And you want to disprove that assumption, and if you can't disprove it, you say, I'll believe it as, as true. That's really what a hypothesis is. Is that okay, Val? That's okay, right? Thank you. <laughs> now, We'll, we'll talk more about this shortly. Well, thank you very much for coming and listening to this presentation on forensic document examination.